Good morning, Stetson Baptist Church. How's everybody doing today? Amen. We are here at Conrad Park to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. So let's all stand as we worship today. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb Till I met you I was breathing but not My failures I tried to hide. It was my tomb till I met you. You called my name and I ran out of that grave. Out of the dark. going to sing this part here because this is the truth. We need a rescue. I needed rescue. My sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I need a shelter. I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. My eyes are open Cause when you call my name I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You call my name And I ran out of that grave Day, oh glorious day. Oh. Amen. I was dead in the grave I was covered by sin and shame 
I heard mercy call my name. He rolled the stone away. Amen. Amen. I'm alive. I'm alive because he lives. Amen. Amen. Let my song join the one that never ends because he lives. Oh, I was covered in sin. I was covered in sin and shame. I heard mercy call my name. He rolled the stone away. Amen. Amen. I'm alive. I'm alive because he lives. Amen. Amen. Let my song. tomorrow because he lives every fear is gone I know he holds my life my future in his hands amen amen I'm alive I'm alive because he Amen, amen, let my song join the one that never ends, amen, amen, I'm alive, I'm alive because he sing the great hymn because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know Amen. You may have a seat. Well, good morning. Happy Easter to you. He is risen. He is risen indeed. What a great, great day. Hey, I am so glad that you are here today. Just a couple of quick things. Uh, first of all, your fans. Isn't it nice to have a good fan? It really is. I just want to say, though, we are testing your rhythm to see whether or not you can fan with the beat. We'll see what happens anyway. Um, but we, you are doing a great job. Thank you for being here. Listen, we were praying for no rain and we got no rain, right? We also got a really clear sunny sky, but I am so glad that you're here. What a great day for us to be able to, uh, to be here. A couple of other things. First of all, uh, in your little worship guide or your little bulletin that you got, all the words to the songs are there. If Carlos sings the right words, they are there. So sometimes, you know, oh, and there's none there. All right, well, 
you know, anyway, whatever. Hey, I'm so glad you're here today. It's going to be a great day. A couple of quick things. First of all, in your bulletin, there's lots of information right there on the front. If you would like to check into our service, you can do that right here through your cell phone by texting the word INFO to 386-400-9991. It's all right there on the front. Also, if you would like to, uh, to know about what is going on in the life of our church, that is where you get that. That's where you get sermon notes, all kinds of things. There's also an opportunity for you to sign up for uh, an event that we call Pizza with the Pastor, where we talk about being a member. So if you're interested in being a member of Stetson Baptist Church, you can get that as well. Uh, and then the other thing that we would love for you to do is this little blue card. So there should be one in every one of those bulletins. We would love for you to fill that out just so we would have a record of your being here. If you did it online, that's great, but you can also do it in the analog way. And you can put it in the offering boxes when you leave today. There's one at every exit. Hey, I am so excited about what God's doing here. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming out, braving the elements, being a part of this really special day of worship. It is a really uh, amazing uh, view to see all of you around this room and, uh, and around this place. What a great thing. What a great moment. I'm so glad that you're here. We are excited about what God's going to do as we worship together today. Would you go to the Lord with me in prayer? Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for who you are. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for for leading us. Thank you for the privilege of being in your presence. And God, I just, I just am so grateful for this day. I'm grateful for what it represents. I'm grateful for the people that you have brought here so that we can worship together. But God, I'm also, it's Easter. It's Resurrection Sunday. We have an opportunity today to serve and to worship and to recognize our risen, living, conquering Savior. And so, God, today we are so grateful. We're grateful for the day that it represents. We're grateful for the celebration of today. We're grateful for the people that you have brought here. And, God, we pray that as we worship and as we sing and as we open your word, God, that everything that is done in this place, it would all be pleasing in your sight. Let it be about you, Father. We are grateful for this time. We're grateful for the privilege of being in your presence. And we pray that you will speak to us in a powerful way today as we worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like the blood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amen. My 
I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Cause your name is power Your name is healing Your name is love Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety to every soul. Let's all sing that. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus. 
Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Let's call the name of Jesus right now. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's just something about that name. Master. Amen. Well, amen. There is something about the name of Jesus, right? What a great, uh, what a great just kind of beginning and, and what a wonderful time and so grateful that you are here today. I, I just want to take just a couple of minutes and, and share with you. There, there's some things that I know about you. I, you know, looking around this, this place, around this stadium, there's there's a lot of people here. I don't know if you've looked around or not, but there are a lot of people here, and what a great crowd. And so thank you so much for, for coming and being a part of this. You know, I, I, will, I will never forget the staff meeting. We were kind of sitting around saying, you know, we're going to be in a renovation when it comes to Easter. What, what are we going to do? And somebody, and I can't, honestly, I can't remember which, which of our pastors it was that said it. Somebody said, what if we, I don't know, what if we had a, what if we had a worship service at the baseball stadium? And I remember kind of looking at that going, well, that's a crazy idea. But here we are, right? And uh, so I, I'm just, what a, what a great moment. And so I, I want to I keep you for just a minute. I, I don't know all of you. I, I see a lot of faces that I do know, but I don't know uh, the details about every single one of your lives. But I can tell you something that I know about you, and that is that in your life, in one way or another, you have something called trouble. Trouble is universal. 
Trouble is present in all of our lives. I, I, I actually did a, a little bit of a, of a Google search, and I, and I looked for some people that had trouble. Can I, can I share with you a quick story about somebody who had trouble? There was a, a lady that came into the office one day, and, uh, and she got to the front desk, and, and all of a sudden she gasped loudly, and she said, Oh no, I forgot my dog. Now that shouldn't be a problem except for the fact that she was at the veterinarian's office. Or what about, the, uh, what about the lady that was sitting in the dentist chair? And the dentist kind of went in to take off the dental bib, but the lady mistook his advance for a hug. And so she hugged her dentist. I think she changed dentist right after that. Or what about the, uh, the man at the wedding who was doing his daughter and son, future son-in-law's wedding, and at the end of the service, at the end of the wedding service, he, he pronounced them, Chad and Gina Oblinsky. The only problem is the husband's name is Mike. <laughs> we have trouble in our lives. I, you know, one of the places that I've seen trouble probably the most is in church. I've seen a lot of trouble in church. Church stories are, are, are really universal. Uh, a couple of quick uh, church stories, and we've all experienced this. What about the cell phone in church that is all of a sudden out of control? Anybody ever experienced that? Hey, I've got a hint for you. Turn it down. Just turn it down. Don't try to stop it. Just, just turn it down. That's probably your, uh, your best bet. Or uh, I actually did a funeral one time of a lady, and this family had a great idea. They were going to release a dove at the graveside to represent this lady flying off into eternity. Guess what? The dove flew five feet and fell down dead. It was a very difficult moment. Or here's my best one. I did a, uh, I, I, I actually led music at a revival when I was in seminary, and we got finished singing the songs, and I went and sat down listening to the preacher preach, and, uh, and I heard this odd clicking sound, tick, tick, and I thought, what in the world is that? And then I finally realized it was the organist, two rows in front of me, clipping her toenails. Now listen. Those are kind of ridiculous stories, kind of funny stories, but when we really talk about trouble, trouble comes in all kinds of forms, and the reality is that trouble is not always funny, is it? Trouble is difficult. Trouble is hurtful. Trouble is harmful. I, I know that you've experienced it. I, I've experienced financial trouble is not funny. Family trouble is not funny. Uh, we've got some kids in the room uh, Grade trouble is not funny, is it? It might not be funny to you, and it's definitely not funny to your parents. Uh, 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 marriage trouble is, is not, it's not something to laugh at. The, these are difficult circumstances. These are difficult situations. And trouble, while we can tell the story, and sometimes it might be a little humorous, when we really experience trouble in our lives, it's, it's not humorous, and it's not easy, and it's really difficult to deal with. I want to read you one verse of scripture, and I, before I read it, I want to put it into perspective. It's, it's right at the end of Jesus' earthly ministry. It's in John chapter 16, and, and Jesus has, has been betrayed by one of his disciples. He's spent time in the upper room. He is going on his way to Gethsemane. He's offering kind of his last words and his last speech, and, and so basically what he says is he, he says these words to his disciples, to his followers. He says, in this world, I have said these things to you so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have tribulation. Another good word for that is trouble. But take heart, for I have overcome the world. Jesus is at the end of his ministry. He's at the end of the moment. He's at the end of his life. He's about to go to the cross. And his last words in his last speech are you're going to have some trouble, but take heart for I've overcome the world. I think what Jesus knew was that he had experienced some trouble in his life. Even being the son of God, even being as powerful as he is, as he was, he had experienced trouble. He had been rejected by the law givers of the day, by the religious leaders, even by one of his disciples, eventually by all of his disciples. And honestly, if we were to think about it this way, Jesus is even rejected by us sometimes. Jesus experienced trouble, and he was telling his followers, you're, you're going to experience 
some trouble in this world. That's true of all of us. You know, I've learned something about trouble. You're either coming out of trouble, in trouble, or waiting to go into trouble. That's just kind of how life works. Life seems to be a a, a series of ups and downs and twists and turns and starts and stops. It's kind of like a thrill ride at the amusement park, but not a thrill ride that you ever want to go on again. It, it, it is difficult, it is hard, it is harsh. And the reality of our lives is that we experience trouble. And Jesus knew that. Uh, the, the actual word that is used there to translate trouble is, is the word philipsis. And basically what it means is a squeezing or pressing together. It is the same word that would be used of putting a bunch of grapes in a vat and squashing on them to make juice so that they could make wine. So it is the wine press. It, uh, basically what trouble is in our lives is it is a squeezing. I, I, some of you have experienced this. Sometimes when we experience trouble, it's all almost like our guts are being squeezed out and we've been there and I'm looking around at some people and I know some of your lives and I know some of the trouble that you are in have been in or are coming out of and I I know that that's true of every person in the room every person here we've all experienced those levels of trouble and so this this morning I want to talk to you about what Jesus says about trouble. He, 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 he proclaims to us that we're going to experience trouble. And, and, and the reality of our lives is that our trouble is, uh, our trouble is troubling, right? I, I, I've heard people say, well, you know, that's bad, but you'll never guess what I went through. Well, have you ever been around one of those one-uppers that every story you tell them, they've got a worse story? They've always got something, well, yeah, I know what you're dealing with, but, but you should have been with me when, and they fill in the blank. Aren't those people annoying? Don't you just want to say, hey, listen, my trouble is my trouble, and it's really bad to me. I don't care what you've been through. Yours might have been worse to you, but my trouble is trouble to me. We all go through circumstances in our life, and regardless of what somebody else has gone through, and we can always find somebody that's got it worse off, right? But... Even though we can find somebody that's got it worse off, that's them. This is me. I'm going through a difficult time. And when we do that, we need to recognize and we need to understand for each other that our trouble is very troubling. Your problems are your problems no matter what anyone else thinks of your problems. Jesus is saying that. I have said all these things to you so that you might have peace. In this world, you will have tribulation or trouble. But take heart, for I have overcome the world. You see, Jesus in this moment is proclaiming a message that while we are going to have trouble, while we are going to experience difficulty in our lives, whether it be family or financial or relationship or grades or, or health or whatever it might be, when we have trouble in our lives, Jesus is saying, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. In this world, you're going to experience some tough moments, but take heart, for I have overcome those tough moments. I am bigger than the trouble that you are in. All you need to do in those moments of trouble is trust in me. Now, that's a great story, isn't it? But the interesting thing about that story is it's at the end of John chapter 16, If you were to have your Bibles and you were to read along with me, you were to go to John 17. There's a long prayer of Jesus. And then in John chapter 18, something interesting happens. Jesus is betrayed. Jesus is arrested like that. Jesus is accused. Jesus is taken into captivity. And Jesus is tried. And Jesus is sentenced. And Jesus is killed. The one that said, I have overcome the world, dies on a cross. All of a sudden, the the followers in that day probably looked at his teaching and said, that's great, Jesus. You have overcome the world, but what about this? You died. How can we trust in a Savior that would say, I have overcome the world, if he dies? Well, you know the answer to that. It's why we're here today. Because Jesus, on Easter Sunday morning, was no longer dead. 
On Resurrection Sunday, Jesus returned. On Resurrection Sunday, the stone was rolled away. And no longer were we worried about one who said, I've defeated trouble, who was dead. We are looking at the one who has overcome the trouble, overcome the world, overcome sin, overcome death. He has defeated all of the terrible things that happened to us. And we can trust in him because he is alive. Amen? We know and we believe in him and we trust in him. He said, I've said these things to you that you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. You will have tribulation. But take heart, for I've overcome the world. Jesus could have said it this way. Just wait a couple of days. Just you wait. I know you're struggling. I know you're hurting. But just you wait. I've got something in store. We all have trouble. But friends, we serve a Savior that is living today. We serve a Savior that has overcome death, overcome hell, overcome the grave. No matter what trouble we may face, we can always Trust in him. 1898. 1898. The poet uh, Eliza Edmonds Hewitt wrote a, a beautiful hymn of our faith. She was inspired by the Apostle Paul's words in 1 Thessalonians where he talked about being caught up in the clouds together in the air. Uh, the verse encourages us this way. It says, sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Seeing his mercy and his grace in the mansions, bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. The second verse says this, listen to it. It says, while we walk the pilgrim pathway, clouds, storm clouds, dark clouds, dangerous clouds will overspread the sky. But when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sigh. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and we'll shout the victory. No matter what you may be facing today, our God, our Savior has over come when we all get to heaven. Will you sing that with me? When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Come on, sing it like you mean it. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Amen, amen, amen. Here's the truth, and I just want you to hear it one final time. Something you just sang is a very interesting statement. It says, when we all get to heaven. I love that, and I hope that's true of every single person that just sang it. But let me just say real quickly that the only way that you get to heaven it's not by being in an Easter Sunday service in the sun waving that fan. It's not by sweating lots of drops. It's not by figuring it all out or just trying to be a good person. The only way that you can get to heaven is to believe in the one who paved the way for you to get there. And that's not your mom, it's not your dad, it's not your grandparents, not your pastor. The only one who gave you passageway into heaven is Jesus Christ, 
the one who died on the cross for our sins and the one who rose again. Today we celebrate him. Today we celebrate the resurrection. My friend, I want you to know the truth of the song you just sang. When we all get to heaven. I want that to be true of you. But to do that, friend, you must put your faith, your belief, your trust, your life, your eternity into the hands of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen? Amen. If you haven't done that, we have people all around. There are people wearing lanyards. I'll be around. We would love to talk with you about what God is doing in your life. We would love to talk with you about accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior. Answer any questions that you might have. Final thing I want to share with you before we're dismissed from here. Hey, thanks for coming. So glad you were here. This was a great day. Can I just give you a quick hint? We do this every Sunday. Not here. But over in our, actually right now, we're worshiping in our family life center, and it's awesome in there. God is doing some great things in our church. God is doing some great things in our community, and we're so glad to be a part. We would love to invite you to come and to be with us, to be a part of what God is doing at Stetson Baptist Church. Next Sunday, 8.30, 9.45, 11 o'clock, we would love to have you come and be our guest again next Sunday. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for braving the elements. Thank you for being a part of this really special day. We're about to be dismissed. I'm going to ask you to do something as we're dismissed. I know that you're at a ballpark, and I know that some of you, when you're at a ballpark, you just want to give the people that clean up something to do. Let's not be that way here. Let's be good guests. Let's, uh, let's be gracious. If there's any trash around you, if you would do us a huge favor and pick it up. There are offering uh, boxes at the entrances. If you have one of those blue cards, put that in there. I am so glad you were here today. It's a great Easter. Thank you for coming. God bless you. We hope to see you next Sunday. Have a great rest of your day. We'll see you next Sunday.